Welcome back to The Distressed Princess, I'm Rhonda. In today's video, I'm working on thrifted Halloween DIYs. Let's get started. This is the object that I found in the junk store that inspired this entire video. It's an old inkwell and a calligraphy pen, and I only paid $2 for the pen and $1 for the inkwell. I have a little tweaking I'll do on the inkwell later, but first I'm gonna show you the idea that it inspired. I wanted to make an old creepy looking book and I wanted it to be like an Edgar Allan Poe book. So I picked this up at the Dollar Tree and it already has a black cover which you can leave, but I am gonna make my own book cover which will be a free printable for you. There are gonna be some pages on the inside of the book that will be displayed for this Halloween DIY. So I want the book to be able to lay open flat. So I opened up to pretty much the center of the book and tried to lay down the pages and bend the binding so that it will lay down on its own. Then I measured the pages of the book so I would know how big I needed to make my printable. This is a free printable of the poem, The Raven, that I found on itsalwaysautumn.com. However, it was on a white background and I wanted it to look like an old book page. So I saved it to my Canva program and colored it to look old. The link for all these book pages, the book cover and all the parts of the book will be in my description box down below so you can size them to your size of book. So as you see here, I'm just trimming off the book page and I also wanted the edges to look a little worn. So you can do this any number of ways, but I found that if you take a paper cutter like this and just run it barely on the end of a page, it will kind of tear it without tearing too much into the words. So as you see, I don't have much room to work with, but you could also use a lighter and burn the edges. That would be pretty neat too. And this book page we created is going to go right in the center of the book like this. And here's the other book page that's going to go opposite. I designed this myself in Canva. I tried to match up the color as best I could. It wasn't exact, but close enough. So I'm just going to cut down this book page the same as I did the other one. I used Dollar Tree Clear Craft Glue to stick the pages down. So I like to put some of the glue around the edges because you want to make sure the edges are stuck and then some in the middle and then I spread it out evenly with a foam brush so I get an even adherence everywhere. Then of course the same method for sticking on the opposite page. Next I used the Waverly Antiquing Wax to distress the edges and I went heavy on this. I wanted this book to look old and dirty so I did quite a bit on the edges of the book pages and then I also swiped some inward onto the pages that we just made. And I also did the insides of the book covers. I was really happy with the direction that this was going. Then I measured the book binding so I would know how big to print my book binding. And I wanted my binding to go around to the front and the back so it's a little oversized. So here are the book cover components and they're linked in my description box. So I designed the cover and the back cover. The binding part was a design that I found on Canva and I just tweaked the color of it. So now I'm gonna cut all of these pages down. And you wanna start with the book binding. So I'm just doing a test fit here and it also is helpful when you do your test fit to kind of push down and make indentations so that when you go to glue it on, it's gonna go on where you originally wanted it to go. And I'm still using the Dollar Tree Clear Craft Glue and a foam brush to spread the glue out and add the book components. Mm -hmm. 
And I did nice clean cuts of my front cover and back cover. If you don't like the book cover that I made, I thought it also looked really nice just with the binding and it covers up the original title of the book and being that if your book is already black or whatever color you like, then I think that it looks nice enough just like that. But if you are using the book cover, here's me putting on the back page, which I got a little tear in the bottom corner. So be careful when you're cutting your paper. And here it is, it really didn't take much time. None of it was very hard to do and I'm sure that you can complete one as well. I think this book goes perfectly with this old inkwell and pen, but the only thing missing from the inkwell is I thought it needed to have some dried up crusty ink in it. So I'm just gonna use some black acrylic paint and I'm gonna water it down just a smidgen and kind of swirl it around just in the bottom of that inkwell and it will dry and look kind of translucent like there was ink in there, but it's long since dried up. The next thrifted DIY is using this old, at least I think it's old. It is a metal, very heavy, like dresser mirror, but it's mirror is gone. And you see, I only got it for $4 and something, but oh my gosh, immediately when I saw this at Goodwill, I thought, ooh, creepy mirror, we gotta do it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I have these images that I got at Michael's a couple of years ago. They look like x-rays. Now I have a similar thing in my description box down below and you can print it out on regular white paper and I think that it'll work just the same. After giving this piece a good cleaning, then I did a coat of some black chalk paint. Now I realized that not every Goodwill is gonna have something like this in it, but remember this technique for when you're running into old picture frames because the same thing can work. Now, she already looks a lot better turning from gray to black, but now I'm gonna add a little luster with some rose gold furniture wax from Fusion Mineral Paint, which of course I'll link in my description box below. I am an affiliate, so if you're interested in Fusion Paint or any of the Fusion products, I can hook you up. I'm using a stenciling brush to apply the wax and you just dip it a little bit into the wax and then dab off the excess onto a paper towel or something and then just start applying. And I just tried to get an overall luster and just bring out those details in this piece. And the camera just does not pick up its subtle prettiness. <laughs> so in real life, you can see it's just got a little, not too much, not like in your face gold. It's just a little luster and it gives a little added creepiness to this. The next step is to cut out your creepy image. And since my frame does not have any glass in it, I'm going to have to make something work as glass. So I am using a cutting board from the Dollar Tree. Now it's kind of frosty like, but that's okay because the image is going to look like it's kind of smoky anyway. I turned the frame over and used a black Sharpie to trace out where I would need to cut my cutting board. And when I was cutting, I tried to go a little outside of the line I drew just so to make sure I wouldn't cut myself short. I did a little test fit and looks like it's gonna work good. Now I needed a backing, so I'm using a piece of white foam board and I'm tracing out my <laughs> faux glass and then I cut it out and foam board is just what I had on hand. You could also use poster board. 
All right, then I sandwiched it all together to see how we were doing and I was pretty happy with it. But I decided that the image needed blended in a little better. So I am using some black paint and I'm just using a little dab on a foam brush and I'm swirling it around kind of in a haphazard smoky like way. And then immediately after that, while the black was still wet, I added some white paint so that I get a grayish smoky with hints of black and hints of white. And I thought that would make the x-ray image uh, blend in better. So you can't really see where I cut it out. I used small pieces of double-sided tape to tape the skull to the backing and I tried to hide the tape in the areas of the skull where there was more black. Now see how he looks when we add the fake glass back on top. And the next step is to glue the fake glass to the backer so I'm using hot glue and I only did just a little bit on each side that was plenty to hold it. I did another test fit and I saw where some of my backer was peeking out from behind so I did a little bit of trimming. And because I want to make sure this lasts for years of Halloween decorations, I'm using E6000 and I'm going to glue the back to the frame. In the final step, I wanted to paint the backing black. So I think this is a super cool decoration and it only cost me about five bucks. The next one, I'm not really sure how well it goes with the other two decorations I made, but I thrifted this outhouse and it was only $3. I loved that it was wooden. I knew I could turn it into something creepy. My first thought was put a skeleton in there. You gotta put a skeleton in there. So um, the first thing I did was I wanted to paint it black. So I mixed up a little bit of black paint with some water. So it's gonna be like a black wash. This gives more of a weathered effect instead of a flat black or glossy black paint on an old outhouse. I mean, wouldn't you assume that the, the boards might be old and maybe rotted? So that's why I went with a black wash. And I want you to keep this technique in mind. You could also do this on bird houses and turn those into creepy objects too. For the wooden shingles on the roof, I use Waverly Antique Wax to give them a little darker color. And I also applied some of the antiquing wax to the siding of the outhouse to give it a little bit more interest and dimension. Now I thought that one of these skeletons from this skeleton garland would be the perfect size for my outhouse. So I cut the little thing off the top of his head where he's attached to the garland. And I had to do a little bit of surgery because he was just a little bit too tall. So I had to cut his legs a little shorter and glue them back on. but. You know, depending on what you're doing, you may not have to do surgery if you're using a skeleton. Your skeleton may fit in your birdhouse or whatever it is you're crafting. And I used a couple dots of hot glue to keep him in there. Then I thought it would be cute to use a wooden cutout on the outhouse, so I chose this ghost that came in this package of wood cutouts from Michaels. So I'm just gonna paint him white and then hot glue him onto the front of the outhouse. I thought it would be cute to have some spider webs, so I'm using a white paint pen and I'm drawing some spider webs on each side of the outhouse, just in the back corners. And the last piece was also something I thrifted for a dollar. These little owls caught my attention. Someone made them in their ceramics class, it looks like. 
I love them and they are going to be perched right on top of the haunted outhouse. And here's the finished product. I think it's a lot of fun. And like I said, you could do this with birdhouses or little uh, fake buildings that you find or even dollhouses. That would be really cool. So let your imagination wander. You can turn anything into something creepy. Now let's take a look back at all our haunting, thrifted Halloween DIYs today. Time for a cute cat video. The temperature got pretty hot in this house yesterday, even with the air conditioner on, and I think Yachty was just about beat from it. Or maybe he's just thinking about being Superman. I don't know. And Sweet Pea was pretty tuckered out too. She found her a cool spot to lay down and take a nap. And have you ever seen a bunny flop? Well, here it is. Flop. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content. If you're digging my videos, then be a part of the community. And we can talk in the comments section. I can talk with you on the community tab. And we have a lot of fun. So, from me and the critters all here at the Distressed Princess DIY, we hope you have an excellent weekend. And we'll see you next time. Bye.